Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to be going through steel chains and I'll give you a rundown of all the different chain types and how steel marks their chains with the numbering system. Also, uh, which files to use and some other accessories that you can use when you're doing some filing. For steel chains, steel is going to have a green chain, which is a safety chain designated by the green box on the chain. That's got a second raker on there to reduce the kickback on the chain. They also produce a yellow chain, which is going to have a yellow designation on the box right there. You can see the yellow square. Uh, that chain is just going to be missing the second raker. In the corner of this box on steel chains, they're going to show you what chain is in the box. Uh, this particular one is a micro, which is a semi-chisel. They also make a full chisel, which is a super, a dura, which is a carbide tip, micros, hexa, classic cutter, square ground, minis, rescue, and ripping chains as well. This is going to show you the depth. This is going to show you the drive link. This is going to show you the bar link. And then down here in this corner, it's going to show you which file to use when you're sharpening the chains. Also, if you look at the front of the box, it's going to show you the degree of the chain, which it needs to be sharpened at in order to go back to factory specs. This part of the box will show you the part number of the chain, which is located right here. Right below that, it will show you the type of chain and the drive link count. And that number matches up with the top number, which is 67 on this particular chain. The R and the M at the bottom stand for Rapid Micro, which is designated in this corner as well. I'm going to pull this chain out of the box and show you the strap where the chain is connected. Uh, this particular one has a green strap, which is a safety chain. It's got a second raker to reduce the kickback. Yellow chains are going to have a yellow strap, and they're missing the extra raker that's on the chain. Now I'll show you how to check the gauge on your chain. If you don't know what it is, based on how it's marked, you can get these handy little tools right here. Husqvarna and Steel both make them. You just fit the drive link into the slot, and whichever one it fits nice and tight in is going to be the size that you're using. This particular chain is an 063. It won't fit in the 050, but it'll fit nice and tight in the 063. That's going to be the one you want to use. This next chain is going to be a quarter inch Pico. You're going to identify the file that's the proper one to use, match it up with your box. The box is also going to tell you to use a quarter inch Pico, so make sure you're using the right file for the right chain. You can see these quarter inch Pico chains are really small. Uh, most of the time they're going to be used on pole saws, top handles, or your battery powered products. Uh, notice the size of the drive links and the size of the cutting tooth. You can see this file fits nice in the cutting tooth. Uh, make sure that you're doing your filing with forward motions, lifting up, not to go back and forth. Next chain you're gonna be using is a 3 8 Pico, designated by the P. If you look at the file box, it's gonna say 3 8 P. The chain box is gonna also say 3 8 P. Make sure you're not getting confused with a standard 3 8 chain, which is completely different than the 3 8 Pico. 3-8 Pico chain will come in different styles as well, uh, Duros, Supers, Micros. Just make sure that you're getting the right chain for the right application. Steel files can be used with a handle system or replacement files for your 2-in-1 system. Just also keep in mind that the 2-in-1 systems are going to be unique to each file size, and a 3-8 file will not fit in a quarter-inch Pico system. I recommend getting these gauges to check the file size. They come in really handy. Uh, you just stick the file in the hole, make sure it's a nice tight fit, and that's going to designate which file you're using. The next chain we're going to look at is a 325 chain. Uh, pretty similar in appearance to the 38s, but completely different. If you try to put the wrong chain on the wrong sprocket, they're not going to line up. Make sure that you're using the right file for the right chain. The chain should fit tight with the file. If the file has any play in it, you're probably using the wrong file, so go back and check it with your depth gauge. Next chain we're going to look at is a 3.8. Uh, the 3 8 chain is going to be pretty common on most of your pro saws with the exclusion of the 261. It's also going to be found on a lot of your larger farm and ranch saws as well. The idea behind the hexa chain is it's going to cut 10% faster because of the reduced drag on the cutting tooth side. You'll notice the little notch that's cut out on the front. That's what's going to make the chain move faster. 
Filing a hexachain is pretty simple. It's going to take a different file. Just match that file up. Make sure it's a correct hexa file for your chain sharpening. And you just set the file inside the cutting tooth and push through like you normally would on any other file. I'll take a screenshot of the hexa tooth so that way you can see the difference in the cutting tooth from our standard Super 3 8 chain. Flat files are used for taking down the rakers. Uh, you're going to need to take the rakers down when you sharpen your chain as the rakers are going to set the depth for your chips. If you don't already have one of these depth gauge tools, I'd highly recommend getting one. Uh, they come in really handy when you're out in the field or you're not having access to some of your other tools in the shop. Another handy tool to have is a stump vise. These work great out in the field. You can pound them into a log and then you have a place to tighten your bar down so you can file your chain on site. Another tool I'd recommend is a bar dresser. This file goes right against the side of your bar, cleans up any of the burring that's on there from the chains. One of the handiest tools Steel makes is their two-in-one filing system. Each filing system is going to be unique for the size file that it contains. This particular one is a 3 8 Each file system is going to contain two rounded files, depending on what size file you're using, a flat file in the center for your rakers, and then there's also guides on the outside. The files are removable and can be replaced if you pop open the end. Just keep in mind that different size files will not fit in different size systems. You can't fit a 3 8 and a quarter inch set. I wanted to show you guys the Duro chain as well. It's a carbide tip. I'll pull it out of the box here and show you what the tooth looks like. Uh, these chains are said to last up to 10 times as long as the standard chains just because of the strength. These will require you to use a diamond wheel to sharpen. They're not going to be able to be sharpened with your traditional uh, grinding wheels or your file systems. Here's a Duro safety chain I wanted to show you guys what I was talking about earlier. See that second raker on there? When that goes around the bar tip, it's going to reduce the kickback because it's going to open up that section right there, going from that single raker to the double raker on the end. Here's what a yellow chain is going to look like. It's going to be the non-safety chain. Notice how it has that single raker there on the strap on the opposite side. There's no raker on there. So you only have the one raker on that entire system there. Another chain most of you guys aren't going to use, uh, but some of you do. It's going to be the 404 chain. This is going to be used on the 880s, 881s, 088s, the largest saw that steel makes. So here's a second 404 chain. If you notice at the bottom here, there's an F that's going to stand for full skip, which is going to mean that every other set of teeth is missing on the chain. I'll pull them out of the box here and show you guys the difference in the two styles of chain. Notice a set of teeth missing between the other two sets of teeth. Uh, that's going to keep the chain moving faster and it's going to pull out chips faster when you're cutting. It's going to have that reduced uh, drag on the chain. And this is going to be your rapid super chain without the full skip. Notice how it has that extra set of teeth in between there. Steel also makes an RMX chain, which is a ripping chain. If you notice down here, it's going to be a 10 degree instead of a 30 degree. These are going to be micro chains and they're going to be used for doing milling. Notice the 10 degree angle on the cutter tooth of the chain. Uh, standard chains are going to be 30 degrees. You can see how much different the front of these chains look. There's a comparison what about a 30 degree angle would look like. For those of you wondering what the numbers are on the steel drive links and the cutting teeth, here's going to be a quick cheat sheet from steel. I will do another video and go more in depth on what all this stuff means and the markings on the chains. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys, and hope you check out my other videos.